In this video, we look into some of the biggest details of Manalord's warfare and combat. How do troops battle and go to war? Or could they even turn against their lord and cause a rebellion or uprising? This is everything we know about warfare in Manalords. Something we haven't really gone into that much is the actual setting for the game. It's always just seemed to come across as general medieval, but after the last Q&A with new info about the game, we've actually got some actual confirmation about when and where Manor Lords is set. Slavic Magic, the game's solo developer, is hoping to recreate life at the end of the 14th century, deep into the medieval period and sort of swaying towards the latter end of this point in history. But this wasn't always the case. You see, initially the main announcement trailer for Manor Lords, the game was almost as broad as it was detailed when it came to setting. Inspired by arms and armor from the 11th century all the way to the 15th century and the final parts of the medieval period, giving a massive 400 years of time frame which, whilst granted, is all within what we technically know as medieval, but it didn't quite make sense for honing in on those detailed historical accuracy points and making a complete and balanced game. You see, when you have such a wide range of time period to play as, with regions and settlements progressing at different rates, it's sometimes led to Norman-style soldiers, you know, with chainmail and kite shields, on the battlefield with full-plated knights that are normally associated with later medieval periods, which didn't really make all that much sense, historically speaking. Speaking. So, after some discussion and deliberating, it was settled. The game would be narrowed down to focus on the end of the 14th century, making it much easier to keep with the historical side and accuracy the game is being aimed towards. Throughout Manor Lords, though, there have been many questions about the armies themselves. How are they recruited? How does that count towards the general population cap and what is needed to sustain said troops? There's also been a long line of discussion about the inclusion of mercenaries within the title. Currently, it's kind of undecided at this point in development. There are big possibilities that recruiting troops from other regions for small sums of money will be possible, making it a little bit easier for players to adapt to different enemies or playstyles, even if they don't have the troops needed in their own settlement recruitment pools. And there has been talk of having different mercenary companies around the world, each in different regions that have their own personalities and skill sets. This is something that is really being looked into for development, and whilst it's not confirmed, I personally would love to see this sort of thing. Maybe you want to go to war against an army that is mostly favoured towards holding their defensive walls, okay? So you need a mercenary company that's really good with crossbows and archery, and that's their skill. That would be an awesome touch to really build up the world and help with the diplomacy side of Manalot. Yet when you have troops in your army, that are only fighting for the gold that's being earned, sometimes loyalty can come into question. And what will happen if troops turn against their lord? As discussed in the previous Manor Lords video, your settlers and villagers can revolt and turn against you. If loyalty is too low, they will start to loot and burn your own towns, causing havoc, not just to the economy, but the knock-on effects for the military as well. This will also come into its own when your army is on the offensive, heading into enemy territory. If you are victorious in battle, you can occupy their land. And whilst this isn't confirmed, Slavic has mentioned that the inclusion of pillaging and burning enemy buildings will most likely be coming to the title at a later point, as it adds on quite nicely to your own peasant revolts. So we get it right, the game's set in the late 14th century, but this brings up other questions. It's pretty well known that around the 13th century is when gunpowder started to come to Europe and started to be used in warfare, so will it be in Manor Lords? Unfortunately, it's not looking that likely. There was a time when guns were considered, things like the hand cannons, as they haven't really been represented all that much unless we're looking at things like Age of Empires 2 and Age of Empires 4. Yet, as further research and community feedback was given, gunpowder was something that most fans seem to want to leave out of this medieval style title. I do think it's kind of a shame. I would love to see some more realistic representations of things like the hand cannon in medieval games, which is why I wanted to include this section in the video, just to give an idea of what most of you think. Should they be in Manor Lords, or will it just change the way the game is meant to be played too much, and you would probably just prefer the typical approach to medieval with bows and swords? On this note, I have actually done a poll. Should Manor Lords include gunpowder weapons in the 14th century? And by the time of recording, it's 65% yes, so maybe it could could sway the other way. But let's talk a little bit about the soldiers and the troops that are actually in the game. Of course, we saw in the initial combat reveals that you have your generic peasant soldiers, people who have been dragged off the farms or laborers that have been called to fight to protect their homes and families. They will honestly be the bulk of your army, at least in the early game. Not really trained as professional soldiers, but just normal people armed with whatever they can find. 
pitchforks, hatchets, hammers. Later, however, as you progress through your economy and tech trees, you can start to look at things like barracks and archery ranges. Here you can really start to train up your troops to be real fighters, giving them better equipment and training. Currently, soldiers, though, don't really gain experience through the battles. That's something that fans have called up saying they might want, but it's still being decided by the developers. At the moment, you just have your generic melee or archery training statuses once they finish their training periods in the barracks or archery ranges. You see, Experience is good in games, right? Like Total War, the more they're in battle, the better they get. But that's fine when you have a dedicated army. But in a more realistic game like Man Lords, where after the battles and wars, your armies don't just disappear. They disband from the fighting and go back to their normal jobs and lives as farmers or blacksmiths. Then, once they're called back to the front line, they wouldn't have the same units or experience as they did in their previous tours. So it makes making a persistent XP system almost impossible. Once on the battlefield, it is down to you as the strategist to win the day. Whether you're positive in numbers or drastically down on the enemy's army count, moving your troops to using the waypoint systems, shield walls, and slow retreating to gain or lose ground. This is where it's been compared a lot to Total War. However, Slavic Magic has stated numerous times that the scale won't nearly be on the same level due to the main focus of Manalords being on building an economy and a successful settlement, rather than just pure warfare and grand strategy like the Total War franchise. But speaking of Total War, like that game, terrain will affect the battles. Soldiers run slower uphill and they'll run faster downhill. This combined with the buffs and advantages they get in charges can be devastating. If a mass of armed knights thunder down a slope into an enemy shield wall, it will do way more damage than if both were on equal playing fields. Forests as well eventually will be factored in. I'm assuming this will include things like much slower to move through, but giving that much needed cover for line of sight or even projectiles, helping shelter your troops and forces from the enemy arrows. We did see some of these things like hill advantages in the previous combat video, but this new Q&A just reiterates these points and the amazing detail being put into the battles of Manalords. So we know about the time periods, the arms and armor being used. We even know about the tactics and training mechanics of the armies, but what about its namesake? What about the actual Manalords? Well, currently within the game, there is a limit to one mana per region. Each will house a lord, or in this case, it will be you, the player. They make all the decisions, whether it's in peacetime or in war. The manners will be used as garrisons for the retinue, the final troop type that hasn't been mentioned yet, and of course, the most elite. Wearing the lord's crest, which yes, will be in the game, and charging out on horseback, the richest and most wealthy, to charge down the enemy in a rear assault, or even mop them up as they flee from the battlefield. The current plan is to have about 30 retinue to new being housed in the base manor whilst upgrading to 60 later on in your gameplay, providing a fierce fighting unit that is nothing to be scoffed at. As briefly mentioned, each lord will have their own crest and coat of arms. These will be displayed on the shields and banners of your troops as they march into battle, and I cannot wait to see this. It's up for debate whether these will be 100% customizable, but we did see in an initial gameplay overview that things like Pixelated Apollo had his own little banner put into the game, so maybe customization is already in there. But right now, this is pretty much everything we know about warfare in Manlords. Whilst not really being the main focus of the game, it's still given that much needed attention and detail that we've seen in all other aspects of the title. And because of this, I can't wait to see more info on it later down the line. But let me know what you think. Should you be able to loot and burn enemy towns? Are gunpowder weapons a good idea for the flow of the game? Leave a comment down below. But leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. But still, I will see you in the next one. Oh, my God.